from your local election headquarters. A series of political debates presented by KGET. This is a special edition of 17 News. And good evening to you and welcome to a candidate's debate here on TV 17, your local election headquarters. I'm Jim Scott. And I'm Maddie Gannon. For the next 30 minutes, you will hear from the two candidates running for Kern County Auditor, Controller, County Clerk, and Registrar of Voters. One of these two people will replace Mary Bedard, who has held that post for 10 years and is now retiring. Lots of hats to wear in this job. Let's take a look. The Auditor Controller is the county's chief fiscal officer providing accounting, auditing, and payroll services to county departments. The auditor controller also administers property tax services to the county, cities, school districts, and special districts. And the county clerk issues marriage licenses and fictitious business name statements, among other things. And the registrar of voters is responsible for of course, voter registration and administration of public elections within the county, as well as maintenance of all related official records. So let's meet the candidates now. Amy Espinoza currently serves as Assistant Auditor, Controller, Clerk, and Registrar of Voters for the County of Kern, a post she has held since 2019. She has worked for the county for 15 years. Prior to her current role, she served as an accountant, a senior accountant for the Auditor Controller, and later as Senior Fiscal and Policy Analyst with the County Administrative Office. Ms. Espinosa is 45 years old, single with a 26-year-old daughter. Ms. Espinosa holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from CSUB with a concentration in accounting. She is a lifelong resident of Kern County and currently resides in Bakersfield. Mark McKenzie is a local businessman, entrepreneur, and founder of Trestles Construction Solutions. He's 65 years old, single, and has three children. He holds a bachelor's degree in business management from Colorado State University and a master's degree in business from the University of Texas at Austin with a concentration in technology commercialization. Mr. McKenzie was born in Grand Junction, Colorado, but he's currently a resident of Bakersfield. Welcome. And Ms. Yeah. Espinosa <coughs> won the coin toss earlier and has elected to go second for opening statements. So first to you, Mr. McKenzie, your opening statement now. One minute, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Maddie. I am a long-term uh, local businessman. Uh, with the, I'm the founder and CEO of Trestles Construction Solutions, a construction technology firm uh, and a consulting firm. Um, I, uh, as your auditor and controller, I want to make sure that there is transparency as far as what is funded and what is not funded. I want to make sure that we uh, monitor uh, and control the costs and that I'm going to work very closely with the Board of Supervisors and the various department heads to make sure that we look for opportunities to reduce costs and improve services. As your ROV, I will clean up the voter rolls. I will implement best practices to ensure that the votes are counted accurately and in a timely fashion and that the opportunity for fraud is uh, reduced. A vote for me uh, will bring in a new era of, of strong leadership uh, and uh, look forward to your vote. Thank you very much. And now to Ms. Espinoza, your <coughs> opening statement, please, one minute. Well, thank you for having me. I'm Amy Espinoza. I'm a lifelong re um, resident of Kern County. Um, I am the Assistant Auditor Controller County Clerk, um, as, as was mentioned. Um, I have over 16 years experience with the county in accounting, in fiscal management, in debt management, um, and then the last three years actually getting very uh, familiar, more familiar with elections. Um, I, I served as, I've worked for, in elections for 16 years, but it was just election day and the last three years has shown me that there's so much <laughs> to this process um, that I wasn't aware of and I don't think most voters are aware of. And one of the most important things that I believe this position needs to do is to educate voters on the processes of the office, on the laws in this state, um, on the um, making making the process transparent um, inviting people in um, and just so that voters have um, confidence in their um, elections office thank you thank you both 
for those opening statements. You know, traditionally, the race for auditor controller is, is really a footnote on election night. Rarely does this race generate much in the way of controversy, uh, but not so this time around. Our election system has come, under, come under intense scrutiny of late, warranted or not, and Mr. McKinsey had to go to court to get his name restored on this election ballot. So, Mr. McKinsey, let me start with you, sir. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, Ms. Espinosa's <coughs> boss, Mary Bedard, concluded that you didn't meet the minimum qualifications for the job of auditor controller because you lack a degree in, in accounting. You argued, argued in court that uh, the degrees that you do have meet those qualifications, and the court agreed with you. You have been vindicated. Do you carry any hard feelings after all of this? Well, I uh, no, I wouldn't say hard feelings. It was um, it was I I I just there was no basis whatsoever for it. We went to court and the judge emphatically ruled that in fact I did have the qualifications. Uh, the one of the top attorneys in the state of California thought I was more than qualified. Um, you know, look at my degrees, uh, undergrad business, master's degree. I'm also a Lean Six Sigma black belt, which makes me an expert in, in process design and improvement. I've got uh, mediator certifications, 30 years of, of uh, business, of dealing with big numbers and complex business systems. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, I, I think it's laughable that that uh, there was even the thought that I wasn't qualified, to be honest with you. Lean six. Sigma Sig black belt. Sigma six black belt. I've never heard that term <laughs> yes, before. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Ms. Espinosa, you were kind of caught in the middle of all of this. Uh, do you feel that Mr. McKenzie is qualified for this job? <clears throat> um, as an accountant, I know that the accounting skills that are necessary and having worked as an accountant in this office are very important. Um, there are technical accounting, high level technical accounting issues that arise that um, the state is looking at. It affects our funding, the county's funding. Mm -hmm. um, and being an accountant and actually having worked as an accountant and particularly a governmental accountant is um, I think very important to this position. Um, to your question, yep. <laughs> Mr. McKenzie, I don't have an opinion on that. My boss, she, she reviewed um, the qualifications, which most offices don't have qualifications, mm -hmm. um, but this office does, and it is for the account, the accounting portion of the office, the the auditor, controller, county clerk in particular. All right, very good. Is there a rebuttal there, or if you wish? Well, I would just say that you know I I uh, I absolutely respect uh, you know I don't know uh, Amy's skills all that well as an accountant, but I I absolutely respect and understand exactly what she's saying about how those skills and it is a it is a complex uh, system but I would go back to once again 30 years I mean I have uh, I've had uh, accounting departments that have worked for me large accounting departments I've had construction payroll which is the most complicated payroll there is of over five six thousand people accounts payable supply chain management so um, uh, you know, I'm very confident that, that I have the leadership to manage okay. the accounting department. All right. So, Thank you. Appreciate. Well, and to you, Mr. McKenzie, why do you want this job? Is this a post you always aspired to? And if not, what really influenced this decision to get in this race? Well, um, you know, it's been, uh, well, last year I spent about two and a half months at the election division observing what was going on down there. And quite frankly, what I saw was inefficiencies, poor leadership, uh, poor management. And uh, it just, I just really felt compelled to do something about it. And uh, that is one of the primary reasons that I've decided to run for this office. Um, it, was, it was a late decision. There was a lot of people that encouraged me to do so. Uh, Mary Bedard was appointed in 2012 and ran two consecutive terms unopposed. And we were looking at a situation where uh, somebody was going to be unopposed again. And, uh, you know, I feel uh, absolutely more than qualified. Uh, I'm excited about the position. I've got tons of energy and, uh, uh, you know, ready to do the job. And Ms. Espinoza, having worked under Ms. Bedard, what's your motivation for seeking this <coughs> office now? Um, well, looking at Mary leaving, Ms. Bedard leaving, um, really I've started, at one that when I started working with the county, um, I've started in the auditor controller's office. <coughs> Excuse me. And I actually sat right outside the then auditor controller and 
Barnett's office. And um, I just remember seeing her so busy, people in and out, and thinking to myself, gosh, someday I could be the auditor controller. And that's as an accountant one, not really knowing anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've worked my career um, working towards maintaining independence along the way, um, learning as much as I could about the county structure, about the services that the county provides to other departments, to, um, to cities, to school districts. Um, and I just, I'm ready to serve my community in this way. I've been a public servant for the last 16 years, and this is, um, this is something that I know I can do a good job. And I'm looking for, as I said, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thank you, candidates. Uh, well, one of you will essentially be running three departments, as we have said, with 54 employees under your supervision. The question now, should this department, this job, be broken up? And secondly, should the position of registrar of voters be filled by a vote of the people? Ms. Espinosa, your thoughts first, please. Well, what I'll say to that is that the functions of the office of the auditor controller and then looking at the county clerk registrar of voters, they are very different. Um, it, is, it is a complex department because it's not all accounting. Right. Um, there, there's just a lot of different hats that um, the elected official has to wear. And um, it's, it, it's honestly, for me, if that's the will of the board and the people to break it out. I don't have a problem with it. I would not go and, and um, promote it necessarily, mm -hmm. but um, it, is, it is a lot. Okay. It really is. Mr. McKenzie, should this uh, department, should uh, the auditor controller's position be decoupled from the registrar of voters? Well, as uh, some of you may know, this was uh, by ordinance back in 1994 that the two were combined. And, um, uh, you know, through a lot of kind of back and forth with the board, it was determined that the board could reverse that ordinance if they, if they choose to. And I have, uh, uh, I have had a position that I think it should be separate and I, I believe that it should be two elected positions so I think it would be hypocritical for me to say otherwise so process wise uh, when if I'm elected uh, that's something that uh, we just need to have that discussion with with the Board of Supervisors. Well some might question the necessity to break up this department uh, after all the registrar of voters is a pretty quiet place most of the time until election cycles run around and then it turns into a controlled chaos if you will um, but uh, Amy Espinoza, are these three jobs too much for one person, do you think? Um, I think with an assistant and with seasoned staff, um, I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, but coming in new and not knowing um, the, the processes, the, the laws regulating all of that, and that's the position I was in you know, almost three years ago when I came into the assistant position. Um, it, it is a lot, and uh, we have had some turnover in the department. We have some people who've been there for a very long time who mm -hmm. retired. Um, and so, so trying to bridge that knowledge gap has been tough. It's required a lot of extra time put in, evenings, weekends, outside the normal 8 to 5. And I believe that the staff that we have now and the dedication of Mary Bedard as well as myself um, we've been able to to bridge those gaps. Okay. All right, Manny? Well, and there has been a lot of talk in general lately about the integrity of our elections here in Kern. Some residents have expressed concern that there's fraud and that the system is broken. Uh, you've had the current office holder, Ms. Bedard, dispute a lot of those criticisms. Uh, but Amy, first to you, do you believe the system is broken, first of all? And second of all, what would you do to improve it if elected? So being boots on the ground in the office um, with the planning, with the execution, I don't believe that the system is broken. I have not seen any evidence that it has been. I know that people have come forward to the Board of Supervisors and maybe in the community um, making allegations. However, again, I can't speak to those because I've not seen any evidence to that. Um, what I would do, as I mentioned in my opening statement, is to educate the public on what the process is. And, and it's tough because a lot of times people aren't, um, aren't maybe, well, maybe some people are, but maybe some people aren't that concerned with elections until there's actually an election and it mm -hmm. kind of picks up. 
And so to really make a, a um, concerted effort in the off season, um, there's not really an off season, it just mm -hmm. kind of seems like it, yeah. but in that off season to really get the word out so that voters have that information and so that they can feel more confident when they go to the polls and they cast their ballots. And Mr. McKenzie, now to you, same set of questions. Do you believe our election system is on solid footing? And what would you do to improve it if elected? Well, I have never made any allegations of fraud. I have made allegations of opportunity for fraud. And in some cases, uh, that has to do with just the vote by mail system, which uh, in Kern County, we have no control over whatsoever. Uh, my my focus has really just been on, uh, I just think there's tremendous opportunity to uh, make improvements to where um, we're, I mean, for God's sakes, I mean, it, it took us 60, we were the slowest county in the state to count the votes. I mean, there were times where, you know, it was seven days without an update. I mean, I, I was down there, you know, observing and people were calling me and, you know, what is going on down here? You know, there's no updates, and and this upcoming election that we have uh, in in uh, November. I mean, we shouldn't have to wait till Thanksgiving to find out who won. We're going to have a lot of really tight contests, I believe, with these school boards. There's a lot of interest there, and we just have to do a better job hmm. of being more efficient. Yeah, so you are preaching to the choir, sir, because on election night we like to have those results uh, as as quickly as possible as well. Um, the board of supervisors earlier this month made an 11th hour decision to extend for one year the contract with Dominion Voting Systems uh, to use their machines in this election cycle. Critics of those machines claim that they are vulnerable to fraud and hacking and, and so forth. So if elected, what would you do about these machines? Renew the contract in 2024 or find another vendor? Ms. Espinosa, you first, please. So to find another vendor, we would have to go to um, take it to the Board of Supervisors. And there are only three systems that are um, approved by the state to be used, Dominion being one of those. Um, I understand that there are some people in the public who do have um, concerns about Dominion. And the, again, allegations that I've heard, I've not seen anything. And I can speak to Kern County. I can speak to Kern County. Um, all of our systems, they're to hack into, I mean, they're they are secure. They're offline, they are behind closed doors with several layers of security, physical security, with several layers of um, technological, technological security with passwords mm -hmm. um, that only one person or two people have. Um, so it's, it's very secure. There's no way, someone would physically have to get to the server to actually hack it. Um, and I don't think that the, the pub general public knows that. And again, I can't speak on, on anything national and in other right. states. Mr. McKenzie, if elected, would you, would you push for renewing the contract with Dominion or perhaps look to other vendors? I, I, I think uh, we just completely missed the point with this whole Dominion machine and the update of the contract. Um, uh, you know, well, I'm not running against Mary Bedard, but the fact that uh, she comes in, you know, uh, she could have come in six months ago. She could have come in and listed the different options that there might be. Uh, you know, one of the things that troubles me is just going back to how slow we count the votes. I mean, we have, what, 10 machines or 11 machines, and those things sit 95% of the time. I think that with the 211,000 ballots that we had for the recall election, if we were running all 10 of those machines at optimum speed, we would probably count all the ballots in about four hours. So the question was, you know, what are the options, which she didn't bring. It was like she held the board hostage and uh, the people of the county hostage. And so maybe we didn't need 10 machines. Maybe we only need three machines if we're going to go as slow as we can. So, uh, you know, I just, I just think the whole thing was really handled improperly. But I will say uh, I have complete faith in our IT person down there. I've got a great relationship. And I will confirm to my knowledge that those machines are not connected to the internet. Now there are allegations that those machines have modems in them, right? Yep. And so we'll take them apart and see if there's a modem and we and you guys can film it, okay? So if you can get the minions <laughs> approval for that, that yeah, might be right, the toughest right. nut to crack there. Okay. Maddie. 
And Mr. McKenzie, you talked about your background in business, but you seem to be very focused on the registrar of voters side of this job. And of course, as we've been talking about, there is a huge fiscal side to this job, managing payroll, yes, auditing is. taxes. Yes, there is. Uh, how can voters be assured that you will apply the same energy to that fiscal side of this job as the election side? Well, quite frankly, I'm really more excited about the opportunity on the auditor controller side. And, you know, as I've said before, I've got, uh, you know, I've had multi-billion dollar profit and loss responsibility. I've been in, and you know, Amy had mentioned earlier about the uh, position itself, and I see this as an executive level position. I, you know, it's not about functional skills from accounting standpoint, and, and uh, you know, God bless the accountants, but, you know, we have, it's not only overseeing the controller and auditor position, registrar voters and the county clerk, but there's also a lot of skill set in dealing with the the uh, tax collectors and assessors and all the board of supervisors and the department heads as well in developing those kind of relationships to where we can do audits and uh, and we're working together to see how we can improve and reduce costs. And Ms. Espinosa, your strong suit is accounting, is the fiscal <coughs> side. You talked about what you've learned about the election side under Ms. Bedard. Do you believe that you have the skill set to af effectively run the elections department? I do. And, you know, Mark mentioned um, that it, it does, this job involves creating relationships. I do have relationships with county departments, um, the county administrative office, um, board of supervisors offices, department heads, um, actually some very good relationships. And even once I left the county administrative office, I've been able to help coordinate some county functions outside of the accounting function um, to assist the, the county family and mission overall. Um, but he, he's very correct as far as the administration um, and I'm, I'm confident that I can do that job. I'm doing it now as the assistant auditor controller. Can I uh, rebut or yes. move on? Yes, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say uh, throughout my career, uh, call it getting the short straw, but uh, the company that I uh, worked for, we had several different acquisitions. And it seems like I was always getting the short straw. And so that's moving into a company that we just bought and developing relationships with people that, you know, have a lot of fear. And taking over this position, I think I'm just uniquely qualified to, you know, there's going to be a lot of people I need to work with. I've got to build their trust. We've got to get together and get our mission and vision and strategy put together and, uh, you know, go forward. So I, I feel like I'm uniquely qualified to do that. Okay, we've got about five minutes left here uh, before we go to closing statements. Amy Espinosa, if you could wave a magic wand, what one thing would you change right now to make our elections process uh, more efficient? <laughs> um, this is going to be a plug, but to get some get poll workers, to have poll workers on election day who... Um, who are, and the ours are great right now, but we're, every, the last few elections that I've been involved in anyways, we've struggled getting people and um, to have poll workers in the community who um, could help, I really believe that election day that would help mm -hmm. yeah. greatly with the efficiency. COVID pandemic didn't help, uh, no doubt. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> okay, Mr. McKenzie, what would you do with your magic wand to make our election system more efficient? Well, I could get into changing laws, but uh, that's not going to happen. I, I would agree. I, I think it was, uh, I, I want to be fair, but it was just a colossal failure in the, in the manning of temporary workers for at the election office for ballot processing and at the poll sites. Uh, we had 10,400 provisional ballots, okay? And that was more than double than any other county in, in the state. And, and those provisional ballots are a direct result of poor training or, or absolutely the lack thereof. There were cases where, I, I personally observed where we had 20 people in the lobby on election day that were dispatched that day out to poll sites without any training whatsoever. And, and they shouldn't even have been sent. And so what we had is we had poor education of the public, we had poor, poor training for poll workers, which ended up being a disaster where provisional ballots were given when they should have been poll ballots. So, um, so yes, we, got it. we have to do a better job. And, and I'm, I'm really concerned about this primary that's coming up. And so I, I hope that we've got a different strategy than we did for the recall. If we don't, it's a disaster. 
<coughs> Excuse me, may I say something sure. really quick to that? I just want to point out to the public that, um, you know, there are multiple reasons why we have provisional ballots. Um, some are if someone's not found in the roster, um, and again, to make sure that that person gets their vote. But also, um, for the now that it's an all-male ballot election, if someone just comes in and says, oh, well, I don't have my ballot, but I didn't send it in, can I get a ballot? We can't issue it because we, we can't let them... Um, drop their ballot into the ballot box and then they may have a ballot that they send in. And so a large amount of those provisionals did have to do with people just they lost their ballots or they forgot them at home. Um, and some people we had heard were, were, you know, they just didn't want to vote that ballot. Um, and so I just, I wanted to clarify that. The, okay. Could I say uh, Okay, one more, one more rebuttal, but just take 20 seconds, please. Okay, sir. So, so this is what we, I'm sorry, but we constantly hear that it's the voters' fault. We, I guess we have the, the uh, dumbest voters in all of, all of California, and, and I, I know you're not saying that, but um, uh, I still go back to we're more than double of San Francisco County, which is three times the population. This is lack of training and lack of education of the public. And that doesn't have anything to do with voter fraud, and that clearly, clearly lands on the leadership, which includes Amy, uh, for a just absolutely terrible execution. All right, Mr. McKenzie, we got about 30 seconds less before closing statements, and we want 15-second answers from each of you for this last question, I think. Mr. McKenzie, to you first, do you think we should return to a hand count of the ballots? No, I wouldn't say that right now. I would not say that. And Mrs. Uh, the, now, the re real quickly, the reason we can is quickly. because of the vote by mail system. Yep. Okay. And Ms. Espinosa, same question to you. Do you think we should return to that? It wouldn't be feasible, so I would say no. And we haven't done that for over 50 years, so. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're going to move to closing statements now from our candidates. Thank you both for partic participating tonight. And Mr. McKenzie, you will go first. 30 seconds, please. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, last year I spent about two and a half months observing the election process and uh, what I saw was uh, inefficiencies, uh, poor management, poor leadership, and uh, as a result of that decided to uh, run for this office. Uh, I know how to fix, I know how to take care of election integrity. Um, uh, I've dealt with big numbers, uh, complex business systems. I'm not a politician. I'm not a bureaucrat in the private sector. You're held accountable. Um, you, you, you need to be innovative to, to succeed. So thank you and uh, look forward to your vote. And Ms. Esmosa, to you now, closing statement, 30 seconds, please. Okay, so um, I just want to tell the voters of Kern County that I am ready to do this job. I have been doing this job for three years. Um, the intricacies of this office and how it works in the community and how important it is for funding in the community, for funding um, community services programs. And I would just like to close with saying please vote for the experienced um, candidate who will okay. hold the county accountable, will hold, hold the elections office accountable, um, okay. and has integrity. All Thank right. you. And that will do it for our first candidates debate of this election season. Amy Espinoza, Mark McKenzie, we want to thank you for your time and we wish you uh, the best of luck to both of you. We are now just 45 days away from California's June primary election. And for everything you need to know about the candidates, how to vote and where to vote, go to our website, kgt.com. For Jim Scott, I'm Maddie Gannon. Thank you for joining us and good night.